Several lion subspecies are found in the wild. Two of them are the African lion and the Asiatic lion. When the two subspecies of Panthera leo are seen side by side, differences between them might be relatively minor, but appearances don't tell the whole story. Today, fewer than 30,000 African lions and only about 400 Asiatic lions are left in the wild. African lions once roamed most of Africa and parts of Asia and Europe, but the species has disappeared from 94% of its historic range and can only be found today in parts of sub-Saharan Africa. These lions mainly stick to the grasslands, scrub, or open woodlands where they can more easily hunt their prey, but they can live in most habitats aside from tropical rainforests and deserts. Asiatic lions once prowled from the Middle East to India. Now, only a fraction of these magnificent animals survive in the wild. The Gear Forest dry teak woods were once a royal hunting ground. Today, they are a reserve where these at-risk big cats are heavily protected. Asiatic lions are relatively smaller than their African lions, on average and in maximum figures. Adult males typically weigh between 353 or 420 pounds, or 160 to 190 kilograms, while adult females weigh between 240 to 264 pounds, or 109 to 120 kilograms. The largest Asiatic lion on record measured 9.7 feet, or 2.9 meters from the tip of its nose to the tip of its tail. The male Asiatic lions have sparse and exceptionally short mane with their ears visible. Another standout mane feature is the color. The short mane is dark and less developed. Male African lions have a more prominent, fuller mane that covers the whole head and falls back over the shoulders. The mane signals how healthy a male is to females, which they use to attract them and intimidate other rivals. Other than the male's sparse mane, the most distinguishing characteristic of the Asiatic lion is a longitudinal fold of skin that runs along the belly. This trait is found in all Asiatic lions and very rarely in African lions. Interestingly, those from the West Central Africa region and the Barbary lions do have the same belly fold. Around 50% of Asiatic lions have what are called bifurcated infraorbital foramina. These are small holes in the skull that allow nerves and blood vessels to pass to the eye. If a lion's skull has two of these, it's an Asiatic lion. For whatever reason, African lions only have one infraorbital foramen. Their eyesight is just as strong as the Asiatic lions, so there's no particular benefit to having two infraorbital foramina versus just one. Lions are highly sociable and live in social units called prides. An Asiatic pride tends to be smaller than their African counterparts. The largest recorded Asiatic pride included five adult females, but most just have two adult females. The reason behind this is that the Asiatic lions prey on smaller animals, which makes sense to have a smaller attacking force. Another possible reason is the size of their habitat. Gear National Park is not that big, and the hunting space is too constricted for the lions to operate in a large pride. In Africa, these prides include an average of four to six females, their cubs, and one to four male lions. The faster, more agile females do the hunting, while the larger male lions patrol and defend the pride's territory. The females in a pride usually give birth at the same time and raise their cubs together in a crash or nursery. Male Asiatic lions do not live in prides. In fact, they tend to only associate with female lions when mating or at large kills. Otherwise, they live alone or in a partnership with another male lion. These partnerships allow male Asiatic lions to control larger territories and more easily scare off rival males. In Africa, every lion pride has a resident male or group of males, which defend their prides vigorously against other males. Pride takeovers occur every two years, during which the suckling cubs of the defeated males are killed. This ensures that the new male will pass along his genes. So, could Asiatic lions survive in Africa? Africa's wildlife is diverse and abundant. No other continent has the diversity of wildlife found in Africa, which spans the entire climatic spectrum from scorching heat to freezing cold. The area's diverse vegetation has attracted mammals, 
birds, reptiles, fish, and insects. Among them are more than 40 primate species ranging in size, from tiny galagos to massive gorillas, as well as a diverse range of antelopes, gazelles, and other hoofed animals, and 70 carnivore species. The bird life is so abundant, with over 1,500 species found in the south of the Sahara. Africa also has the world's fastest land animal, the cheetah, the world's largest bird, the ostrich, and the world's largest land animal, the elephant. The size and strength differences between African and Asian lions are minor, and the majority of this is due to habitat and food availability rather than genetics. That is why zoo Asiatic lions are larger than wild Asiatic lions in gear, because they are fed enough food and don't live in areas where trees get in the way. In addition, grassland Asiatic lions were larger than those found in forests like gear. The prey animals in the gear forest are generally smaller than those in Africa, so hunting groups tend to be smaller as well. This likely explains why pride size is so small. The most commonly taken prey species in the gear forest is the chittle deer, which weighs only around 110 pounds. These account for around 45% of known kills. The prey animals of the African savanna tend to be larger than those in the gear forest of northwest India. African lions will frequently tackle prey weighing as much as 600 to 800 pounds, such as a wildebeest and zebra and will occasionally take down African buffalo, which weigh between 1,000 and 2,000 pounds. This requires cooperative hunting techniques, which may explain why African lions live in larger prides. If wild Asiatic lions from gear were released into the savanna, they would probably survive. They are only around 15 kilograms smaller, and even though males live separately and females live in small groups in gear, that would not stop them from hunting wildebeest, kudu, and other medium-sized prey, although it might hamper their ability to hunt large prey like Cape buffalo. They may also change their behavior pattern and live in prides like African lions after a few generations. They could live in woodlands as well, which are similar to gear. However, adaptation in Africa would not be without its problems. They would probably have limited immunity to the diseases that are prevalent in the African continent. Even the more accustomed African lions frequently fall prey to epidemics. Another issue with adapting to the African continent is that they would most likely be unable to interbreed with African lions. The two subspecies are genetically rather different, and experiments in India to interbreed them resulted in very weak offspring. A small population of Asiatic lions introduced into a foreign country would likely face breeding challenges if they survive the droughts and diseases, and subsequent generations could become weak due to inbreeding. That said, if the introduction could be done in a carefully planned manner and their conditions monitored over time, some of these risks could be reduced, and Asiatic lions could survive in Africa. Now that you've heard our opinion, we want to know yours. What do you think would happen if Asiatic lions were relocated to Africa? We are waiting for your answers in the comments. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.